One topic that is at the same time so important, but also under taught to beginner vibe coders like yourself is Git, G-I-T and GitHub. It's almost assumed that you kind of will figure it out, but a lot of times there's a lot of Git commands that you don't know about and that could be saving you massive amounts of headache, saving you time, making your vibe coding experience so much better. So this video, I'm gonna make you a Git master Let's get into it. So Git, G-I-T, is sort of like a programming language and it's actually for version control. What is version control? It's basically save. Like you're playing a video game and you want to save your progress or you're writing an article or a story in a Google Doc, save your work. Okay, it's save and undo, but obviously way more powerful than that. And we're gonna get into it. Quick note for you absolute beginners, make sure you are in your project folder when you run the git commands. You run git commands from the terminal, which you can see I have open right here in cursor. And if you look really closely, it says vibe testing. That's the name of my folder. That's the name of my project. I know it sounds redundant, but I've gotten lost in there before, done stupid things and regretted it. So just so you know. Also, one important reason why we are learning this, a lot of hosts like Vercel or Render or Railway or Netlify or whatever, you can actually auto deploy your app from GitHub, which is basically your code base stored in the cloud. That's basically what GitHub is. So here's the plan. I am gonna walk you through the setup process, what you should do right now, if you are following along for the first time with this course. And on the second half of this video, I'm gonna go over the common Git commands, what they do exactly, you will see me kind of run them in action right here, just for a couple minutes. It'll all be really simple and easy to understand. Let's get into it. You'll get it, no problem. All right, so if you're brand new, here's what you do. Number one, go to github.com. It's actually not related to the company. I don't even know if there is one of those things. GitHub is a third party tool. This is basically a, they call it a remote repository. It's basically storing your code base, all the files and folders in the cloud. That's all this does. So github.com is totally free, sign up, it takes one minute. You might have to confirm an email or something like that, then let's move on. And step number two, you have to install Git, the actual mm, programming language, if you wanna think about it like that. Now, spoiler alert, I think this works on Mac and Windows both, but I'm not sure. I'm only 61% sure. You should just be able to go to any terminal window or PowerShell or whatever you're using, and just type G-I-T, enter. I already have Git installed, so it shows me a bunch of things I could do. If you don't have Git installed, I'm 61% sure it'll actually just prompt you to install it right then. Again, I could be wrong about that. And if I am wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, just go to Git, uh, I think it's Git-SCM. I think I opened it somewhere over here. Yes, I did. And uh, you can download this like as a program to run. You can install this through Homebrew if you already installed that, which is another completely free Mac thing. And I think I even wrote it down. Brew, install, git. Just go to this website. You can even go Google and search for G-I-T install, git install, and this will pop right up and install it. I'm not gonna walk you through step-by-step. Step. I think you won't have any problems with this. You should be able to go to your terminal and type in git-v or git space dash v or dash version and see the git version 2.45.0 right now is what i have on my machine i have git installed successfully i'm good to go so hopefully you can reach this point with little to no problem okay there's one more thing you have to do before you start using git and it's actually a little tricky you have to connect github to your computer actually you have to authenticate you are who you say you are your device to now I can't show you exactly what to do because it depends on a few things. It depends on Mac OS versus Windows. It depends on which method you use. Yeah, there are more than one methods to do this. It's really dumb. So I am going to leave a link to my notes as always in the video description. Go here, please. You will save yourself some headache by just following GitHub's own guide step by step. And it's really just two steps. Number one, actually you might not even have to do this, but Number one, you will set your username and your commit email on your machine in the terminal, not on GitHub, in Git. I uh, opened up a code playbook lesson here for this. It's like git config, then something, something, your name, Pete McPherson, and then git config your email, your GitHub email address. That's like step one. And again, you can click these and it'll show you exactly how to do that stuff. Step two is gonna be 
caching your credentials on your machine. And in fact, this is the article you're looking for right here, caching your GitHub credentials in Git. I'm gonna click on this really quick. By the way, if you don't know what this means, I'll put it to you this way. You're gonna be storing your GitHub credentials, like your login credentials basically, on your device. On Mac OS, for example, it's on Keychain, which is where you might otherwise put like pass keys or something like that. It's stored on your device and then you connect GitHub. Windows, it's basically the same thing. You can use a couple of different methods to do this, which is why this video is really frustrating and late. Go here and choose the HTTPS method and then choose either the GitHub CLI or something called Git Credential Manager. And I hate to be lame, but I didn't have to do either one of these because again, I did this years ago and it wasn't a thing back then. If I had to do it today, I would do this right here. I would use the GitHub CLI. I would install it, which is super easy and super quick, and then it's on your machine, and you can use the GH command in the terminal. So you would go into your terminal, wherever, and then do like GH, whatever it says, auth login or whatever, and then keep going. When prompted for your blah, 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 do this. When asked, do this, do this, do this. Or you could try the Git credential manager. You can do that too. Either one. And remember, Mac, Windows, Linux, they're all slightly different. So please go here. Yes, I know that's a little bit lame on this video. And again, it is a teeny bit tricky. So be patient with yourself. If you're like five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes deep and you're like, this is still a little annoying. It is annoying, but it's like riding a bicycle. You only have to do this once and then you should be good to go. That's good news. All right, second half of this video where I teach you what Git is and how to use it. So version, control system, what does that mean? So I made a fancy drawing right here. I want you to pretend this thing right here is the timeline of you, I don't know, writing a book. We'll say you're gonna write a book. You're working in a Google Doc. So you write some, you write some, and you wanna save your progress, pick it up again tomorrow. Boom, there you go, git commit, commit. It's kinda like a save point. You keep working and then boom, git commit. You keep working a little bit more and like right here, you're like, oh, this is awful. In fact, I hate all of this stuff right here. I wanna go back in time. Well, you can do that. You can get restore or something like that. You can go back in time and then start over. And let's say you get here and you're like, ooh, I wanna completely try out a new plot line, but I don't wanna lose everything I've already done in case I wanna come back to it. So I'm gonna create a new timeline, a copy of my entire code base for a new feature or something like that. Git branch, git branch, just create another branch right here. Then you work on it, you make a commit, save your work, you make a commit, you make a commit. If you really like everything that you have done, you wanna move it back to your main timeline, you can do that, boom. Uh, git merge or git rebase or something like that. There's different ways to do all this stuff, sadly. Uh, cool, and then you uh, are currently happy with what you got and you're always pushing to the cloud storage. That would be GitHub, git push. Git push, git push, git push, down here to GitHub. And if you ever wanted to pull something from GitHub, you could do that too, git fetch or git pull, right? Uh, or if it was somebody else's project completely and you weren't starting from scratch, you could do git clone, git clone this template or something like that. And that's basically version control. It's a glorified save and undo feature, but of course with a ton of different features for sending and receiving back from GitHub, the cloud version of your entire code base and I mean, there's just a million things you could do. It's really powerful. All right, let's go down the cheat sheet. As a reminder, you could just copy and paste this stuff into your own notes. The link is in the video description. Go check it out, et cetera. So let's go through this right now. Get status you can run to see what has changed. Let's actually open up a cursor here. This is that new project I installed, I don't know, a couple of videos ago. I'm gonna go to terminal and then new terminal. Just as fires open a normal terminal already in my project folder. Very important. Git status, hit enter, and then it says, oh no, not a Git repository. That's because we have not set up one yet. So we can go to git init to create a new repo, i.e. Uh, repository, git init. There we go, it created one, and you'll also see that it changed the colors of all my files here to green. That's because I have changes there that have not been saved, committed. That's why they're green. So. Moving right along, the git save process actually happens in two steps. Number one, git add. Number two, git commit. Basically, I like to call this a snapshot. Git add adds all the changes or the files, or not necessarily all of them. You could add this file, but not that other file, for example, or whatever, adds it to the snapshot. And then git commit saves 
the snapshot. So let's do this. By the way, whenever you see a period, think all files, all files. I don't have to uh, commit all of them. Get status just to see. There's a bunch of untracked files. I could just grab this readme right here and go get add, paste that in, readme.md, hit enter. And now if I do get status, that should be green. That has been added to the little snapshot, which we will save. Changes to be committed. Now, if I go to git add period, hit enter, that's git add all. Now it is uh, all green files right there. So let me clear this. Let's make our first save, our first commit. Git commit, and then dash m, that means we're gonna add a message flag. This is the message flag. And then a message. Basically, describe what you did. It's supposed to use the present tense, not the past tense. I've never done that. Sorry, developers. So usually for the, the uh, first commit here, we'll just say initial commit. Okay, hit enter, boom. And you can see all the files change colors again. And if I make a change, to this page.sfill file right here, and I save the file, and I uh, exit out of it here, you can see now it changed color again, meaning there are changes here that have not been committed. All right, so let's clear this out and go on to talking about, oh, one last thing. You can actually see your previous commits with git log, or if you if you have a ton of them, git log dash dash one line, shows them all on just one line here. And you can actually go back in time to any commit by grabbing the, um, what's this, the commit ID, I guess you want to say right there, right here. And there's actually two different ways to do this. And I'm not going to go through this right now in this video because I don't think you'll be used this a ton, um, but you can just Google how to go back to a previous commit and get, there's two different ways to do it. You can look into it. It's basically some command and then you just copy and paste in this ID right there. So get restore, one last thing. Let's say I made this change right here, get status. Let's say I don't want this here. Well, I could copy and paste this file name and go to get restore and then type out that file name or I could do all changes. So if you're working for 10 or 15 minutes and you just want to scrap everything you did and go back to your last save point, your last commit, this is what you would run. Git restore all. I hit that and then boom, it deleted this. I am back to my git commit and I can get status and you can see nothing to commit. Working tree clean. I've made zero changes from my last commit. Really quick, let's talk about branches. So let's say you want to work on a big new feature, git branch shows you all of your branches. I only have one right now. Clear, git branch, git branch even, sorry. I'm on branch master. So we'll say I wanna do a login, git branch login. Hit enter and now if I do git branch, it should show login and master. You can see I'm currently on master. So you can use git checkout or git switch. They're almost identical. There's a little difference in there. I'm not even sure exactly what it is. You can also do this in VS Code, by the way. Boom, now I'm on a different branch. You can see everything looks the same because I just made this, but let's make a change here. Let's do this right here, let's right here, save this. Watch me whip right here. I have a, uh, a shortcut on my computer. This adds a git add all and that double ampersand means I'm gonna run both of these git commands on the same line here. Git commit dash m added gibberish. Cool, now I have a commit, git log. You can see there's two commits here. Now, if I go back to my other thing, master, let's do a git checkout master. Now you can see it's not there, right? Now, what if I wanted to pull all that stuff into this other thing? It's actually a couple of different ways to do this. If you are working with partners or collaborators, usually you will want to look into uh, cherry pick and rebase, R-E-B-A-S-E. -E. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna do merge. I'm gonna merge all the changes that I made on that other branch into this current branch, git merge, and then that branch name. In my case, it would be login. So I'm on branch master right now, but I want to merge the other login branch with this one. Git branch, oh wait, sorry, git merge. Git merge, login, enter. And now you can see it's right here. And I don't have to commit everything again. I already committed it on that other branch. So if I go to git status, it should be good. On branch master, nothing to commit, working tree clean. And it actually showed, hey, you, only, you changed one file here, uh, that sort of thing. One line, one insertion, one file change. It gives you a little snapshot of what you did. And last, you can use the uh, slash D flag to delete a branch, like git branch uh, D flag, then login. Deleted branch login. So it should no longer appear right there. Okay, cool. Last, let's work with GitHub. Let's push our code to the internet. Cloud storage, basically. Uh, if you actually do git push, which is the very general broad command to send your latest commits, all the changes, uh, update it basically on the cloud version when you do it the first time, like right now, it's not gonna do anything. Git push. It's gonna say, fatal, no configured push 
destination. And it gives you how you could do that, but honestly, the easiest way to do it is when you create your GitHub repo. So I'm gonna go to GitHub. Right now, I'm gonna click New Remote Repository. I'm gonna name it Test to Delete. So I remember to delete this. You can give a description if you want to. You can add a readme here if you want to. Uh, you can do public versus private. I will leave mine uh, private for now. Do create repository. On this next screen, it's gonna give you a little snippet right here that you can copy and paste on your command line right here in your project or create a new repository from the command line. Well, we've already done that. We've already run git init and we've already made our first couple of commits. So we're not using this one right here. We're running this. So I'm gonna copy this. Click this button to copy. Come back here and hit paste. And then, oh, you can do it as one line, I suppose. I have to do it, I have to do it two times right here. I did this one and then I run it again, hit enter again, there we go. And it uploaded my entire code base right here to, and if I do git status now, by the way, git status, uh, it not only says nothing to commit works you clean, but now it says your branch is up to date with origin slash main. I don't know why they name things the way they do, but origin.main is like the default branch on the remote repository. And if I hit refresh right here, I should see not this little connect page, but I see my thing. There's all my code. I can go look at my code right here in the remote repository. There's that same file right here, right? Including my gibberish. So git pull and git fetch and all this sort of stuff. I'm not gonna go over in this video because it's a little bit more advanced and it's mostly if you're using collaborators. But right now you should just know your main workflow looks like this. You make a change or you make a bunch of changes, really. You save your work with git add all, or if you wanna do individual files at a time, you can do that. And then git commit, the m flag, and then the message, deleted, deleting gibberish. All right, I made a commit right here. Now if I go to git status, it'll say, hey, nothing to commit working tree clean, but your branch is ahead of git main by one commit. Use git push to push your local commits. Git push, now we're done, right? And if I go here and hit refresh, now that gibberish is gone. And you can actually see, if you go back to your thing, somewhere over here, there it is, three commits. You can actually see your commit history right there. So that's it. There's one more very important thing to note. There is one more incredibly important thing to note. AI can do this for you. If you're working in cursor or with clogged code and you just wanna save a little bit of time, actually it won't save a lot of time once you memorize the certain commands, but if you wanna save some mental energy, you can tell your AI agent to, hey, go ahead and push this live. And it'll automatically do the git add, git commit. It'll do stuff like that. Or you can just say, hey, go ahead and commit these changes. And it'll write up a nice little detailed summary of everything you did or the AI did, and then do a commit message. Just so you know, AI can do it too. So I hope this wasn't too overwhelming. Please drop me a fat emoji in the comment section if you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, please ask them there. I'm more than happy to answer them if I can. All right, I hope you get everything sorted out. Adios.